All right, let's come to the final part of this introductory lecture on robotics. So, robot is typically a mechatronic device, which means it essentially has all the mechatronic components that a typical mechatronic device has, which is the mechanical structure, the sensing part, the actuation part, the logic, and the control. So, knowledge of mechatronics would actually benefit you as a student to design and select sensors, actuators, the driver circuitry and controller for a particular robotic task. Now, if we see this figure, this is from Longwen Sai book. This is, and this talks about the various components, or you can say major components in a robotic system. So you have a robotic arm, or you can say the manipulator, which is this one. You have the works workpiece, which is to be manipulated. This is the end effector of the robot. These are the robot links. These are the joints. This is the base. Right, so this is the mechanical part. The electrical part in this is actually the actuators placed at the joints, which are typically electric motors. And sensor is like vision or laser tracking system, which acts as a sensor. And it tells the robot about the location of the workpiece because the robot doesn't know where the workpiece is. So this information is fed back into the computer system, which again forms part of a robotic manipulator. So this computer system sends commands to the robotic controller, which is able to control the position of the robot as per its kinematic structure. And then it sends the motor control commands to the robot to move to this position. So the robot is initially, let's assume somewhere here with the end effector. So robot is programmed and then you know, commanded to move to this position and hold the work, work piece. So this is done by first sensing, which is the sensor here. And then controller sends commands of, for actuation using motors. All right. Now, where these motors are actually gone, that's also important because there are inertial effects and other effects, you know, which are beyond our control. So they, the, these position of the actual position of the robot is also sensed by the, sometimes by their optical encoders or any other position sensing, you know, sensors. And then that information is fed back to the controller. So controller tries to ensure that robot actually moves to the position desired position. And in fact, sometimes it's fed back to the computer also in order to visualize or in order to compute things in the real time. So we have seen robot as a mechatronic system. It has sensors, actuators, mechanical structure. It has logic in terms of the program. It has the control architecture because we need to be really precise. So you can see this uh, a CAD model of all these things. So this is the controller, how it looks like personal computer, a typical KUKA robot, manipulator with sometimes force sensing also, with a vision system sometimes, uh, you know, integrated with the robotic manipulator itself. Now, we can classify them, so we can see them this way also, the key components, which is this mechanical, we can see them that they are the structure, that is the base, rigid links or flexible links, joints and effector, and one of the most important things is transmission. Sometimes you need to transmit them the, the motion or the forces with gears or maybe other elements like belts and other things that are also used in robots. You have sensors, which is sometimes motion sensing, tactile sensing, force and torque sensing and vision sensing. The actuators are generally mostly electrical, but it can be hydraulic and pneumatic also. You have the driver part, of the robots, which is very important, the controller and the power source. And in the, in the last one, you have logic and algorithms. That is control logic, the programming, and the interfacing part. So all these things are together very important, or you can say these are the very important components of a typical robot or robotic manipulator. So the driver and controller, generally, you have robots with dedicated controllers. You have something called as electronic speed controllers. You have dedicated PWM, which is pulse width modulate, modulation controllers. You have very popular edge bridge that are being used for small robots. You can use switches, you can use power amplifiers, 
in this case you have PLCs programmable logic controllers you have popularly been used microcontrollers microcomputers or microprocessors that form the actual you know controller you know hardware for the robot so you have terms like ADC DAC which is analog to digital conversion digital to analog conversion that generally is required in robotics when you have signals which are analog or signals which are digital you want them to be converted to analog and you have data acquisition which is also important in robotics and then interfacing and power supply which forms the let's say the driver and controller part of the robot so this is typically mechatronic part so then sensors in robots again as we have seen already motion sensing which can be done by optical encoders tachometers dynamometers you have accelerometers lvdt's gyroscopes they're all used in different applications you can have current sensors for torque pickup which is an internal sensor so these can be classified as internal and external so these are generally inherent in robot they are generally required but this will depend upon the application if you want to do a force torque based application so you need to have force torque sensor can use a pressure sensor you can use a touch sensor you can use proximity sensor to determine how near you are actually to the object you can use also vision sensors so you'll not really go into detail into how these sensors work actually that will go you know beyond the scope of this course but this can always be taken up in mechatronics where we can actually look for the design of these sensors and how what are the underlying physical and mathematical principles for these sensors the popular actuators in uh, robotics is the electrical actuators they actually provide the basic driving torque at the joints so they are actually the most convenient and also faster so you have popularly you know being used as ac servo motors you have dc brushed or brushless motors which are geared or ungeared which means direct drive or can have a geared drive dc servo motors and dc stepper motors are being used 3d printers laser cutters generally use stepper motors cnc machines use stepper motors servo motors are also used very popularly in robotic manipulators there is a difference between each of them in terms of their actually function so you can go you refer to the books for actual you know uh, detailed description of how stepper motor works or how servo motors work so you have hydraulic and pneumatic where usually they are used also for end effector when you want to you know operate the end effector you can use you know, operate them with hydraulic or you can use them generally in pneumatic systems or maybe in place where high low to torque capability is required you can have such actuators they are very rarely used in the industries this is a photograph of the dc motor position and speed control i have taken it from david alcator book so that's why i'm take you know really interested in also mm, for you as a student of robotics to go actually into mechatronics also so mechatronics books provides an example of this dc motor control through the h bridge which i just talked about h bridge dc motor as the actuator this is the gear head and you have an encoder at the back so you have a sensor sorry you have an actuator you have a transmission element which is the gear then you have the h bridge which is the driver for this motor and then you have the pick which is program interface controller which is peripheral interface controller which is actually a microcontroller in which the logic actually is placed how this motor should operate and how it has to be controlled display and a keypad input keypad and other you know uh, other things that are also required so this talks about this can be considered as a single joint of any robot or the robotic manipulator so which means if you are able to control this very well you may be you know you may have crossed at least the first step so later on there are other issues but this could be the first step if you are able to control this so you need a driver a, a microcontroller and a power supply and the actuator and sensor and then you can actually learn about its the mechatronics part of this so in summary this course focuses mostly on the mechanics and control of the most important form of industrial robots that is the mechanical manipulator and obviously this course is a collection of topics from classical fields like mechanical engineering mathematics control theory electrical engineering and computer science each having their own you know uh, functions in this whole you know robotics as a course 
So our focus will be on serial robot kinematics, which will be the next lecture. Then we'll talk about serial robotic so robot dynamics, which, which which falls into mechanics part. This falls into the mathematics part. Serial robot control, which falls in the control systems part. We'll talk about MATLAB and Simulink, and we'll try to see some of the examples we can solve in MATLAB and Simulink about kinematics, dynamics, and controller robotics. And also microcontroller, which I'm also interested in you to learn, which actually will enable you to actually implement any basic control algorithm for a robot. Now, robotics has profound you know, you know, literature now available, and it has a profound impact on these you know, scientific developments. So these are the research journals, that can say one of the most popular journals in robotics is IEEE Transactional Robotics, IEEE International Journal of Robotic Research. These are the most popular or the most you know, highly you know, high impact factor journals. And there are other journals also in the field of robotics. If you want to publish, if you want to do some research, if you're interested in doing any research, you can actually publish, try publishing in these very popular journals. These are the, some of the most popular conferences on robotics, the most celebrated conferences, ICRA, IROS, and then other conferences also where you actually share your ideas, new ideas are being shared. So the most important thing for a good researcher is actually look for these conferences, try to you know present a paper there, try to do some work, or at least look for the proceedings from this conference, which can be sometimes accessed. And then uh, you can actually get to know what is actually latest in robotics, what are the hot topics, what are the hot areas of robotics. Thank you all. Thank you for being with, with me. So most of the things have been taken from S.K. Saha's book, J.J. Craig's book, Bruno Siciliano's and Lung Winsai's book. Images I have taken from Google search and the associated websites. Thank you. See you next time.